Hi, this is Ken Gidge, and this is Gidge World, and I have some really stupid news. But first, before I talk about the stupid news, let's get the Republican, who is in more intelligent than my stupid news, and this is Dave Robbins. And he, you're a Republican, I'm a Democrat. Ken, hi, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad as always to be here, and it's nice to know that I'm not as stupid as your news. Not as stupid as the news. Are you ready for this? I am. I, I'm ready for right, almost uh, anything. I think this is so important, we may need a drum roll. Can you go? I can. Are you ready? Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, all right, okay that's, that's a good drum roll. Starting this week, the United States of America, for the first time, is exporting oil. Did you know that? Why? Well, I think the U.S. has been exporting oil for a long time. I, I seem to recall that that was one well, of the issues what, what, with Japan. Wait, no, no, no. This, no, no, no. Th this is the first time in the history that we're exporting oil, more oil. We were exporting. You knew we were exporting oil before? Yeah. What is all the oil shortage about? In fact, why we're exporting oil is they have a new process to drill oil. And they've made multi-millionaires of people who have, you know, a thousand acres of nothing out in the where. And the most oil happens to be, guess where? Where? Texas. Make sense? No. It, they say we have two trillion barrels of oil. More oil in the United States than in the Middle East. Do you believe that? I find that hard to believe. I find that hard to believe. I find that is dumb. It's like it can't be true. Where you know we literally send soldiers over to fight, and I don't care what anybody says. It has a lot to do with oil. Would you agree? I. Uh, you got. We got to yep. protect these people. Right. Oil. Oil rules. Is due to it. Yeah. Oil, oil rules. rules. So. Oil rules. By the time this show plays, a lot of people know about it. But I just caught my ear uh, in the nightly news, and it said that we're exporting oil. So why do we need this Keystone, is it, pipeline coming from Canada right across the United States? That's dumb. Well, I thought that was so that the Canadians could export oil to Mexico. I like that. That's that's I like that. Isn't isn't no that, no 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 no. I, oh yeah, right. I I can see the United States letting Canadians go right across our country to go to Mexico to export. Well, when when you think about this, if we have oil in Alaska, that's closer to Canada than uh, it is to Mexico. So if we export oil from Alaska to Canada and they export their oil across the U.S. down to Mexico, and then Mexico can export its oil because it also has oil. Yes, Doesn't it does. that, you know, every, actually, it's a very rich country. Everybody, everybody gets in on the foreign trade. I think that that's the uh, the capitalist way of doing things. I think that makes sense. No, no, wait. Let, let me see if I have this straight. Mexico exports their oil to us. Probably at this point, Venezuela. All right, Venezuela. Okay. Venezuela has plenty of oil, which they give to Kennedy, if I remember well, correctly. Well, you know, that's, that's, abs that's right. Okay, no, wait, 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 no, you're absolutely right. right. Okay, no, no, no. Kennedy gets the oil from Venezuela. That's right. Okay, so from Mexico, export to Venezuela, Venezuela sends it to the United States. Right, now the only problem the, with no, this is where, where, where does Kennedy export it to? Oh, Holmes, he, he has the Kennedy, you know, uh, fuel assistance programs. It makes millions of dollars a year on it, but it's still... All right, so... so no, no, wait, let's, let's get how this goes around. Well, I, what I was thinking is that, in effect, if we follow this logic, oil from the United States at the start of this pipeline ultimately gets back well, into yeah, Bay State homes. Yeah, but you, you have to do it properly. You've come to the conclusion. You've given the punchline. The whole idea of trying to explain this was to... All right, so let's let's. You mean you mean I'm dumb? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Well, you know, you mentioned you mentioned Alaska and oil. Yeah. Where does that oil go? Well, that oil that goes to Canada. That that oil in Alaska goes to Canada. Right. Mm. Okay. Now, Canada wants to put a pipe. With, I, is it the pipe like the uh, Alaskan pipeline? I I would I would guess so. It's, okay. Uh, so right across our country, a pipe like the Alaskan. Pipeline, and they're going to put it right across 
to export it where? Well, to, to Mexico. Isn't to that Mexico. the idea? Okay, so Mexico to Venezuela, right? Yeah. Okay. Venezuela to Kennedy. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, then Canada across our country to Mexico. Well, we've, I think we've already, we've already covered that. And in, fact, and, and, and in fact, we just found oil. Yeah, but one of, the, one of the things that can happen with this pipeline is, you know the, the Alaska pipeline, Prudhoe Bay? What they have is they've got it running along the ground, and every once in a while it kind of goes like this. So, well, so yeah. the caribou can get through, but you could do it over the highways. You could have it go right across the ground and go like this over it, 90 it, it, and wait, go wait, along wait, and go wait like that. Wait a minute, are you, are you trying to tell me as a Republican, because all the Republicans are yelling and screaming to do this. Absolutely. They're yelling and screaming. So what you want to do is you want to put a pipeline. You know, and the pipeline is what? Four feet across? It's oh, I pipe. think we're probably talking 10 or 12 feet. Ten a, a, a big mother. A ten, all right, 10 or 12 feet. So yeah. that's, let's say, three times from me to you. Would you say that's 12 feet? Well, yeah. come on. Don't, not, you don't have to go by the hundredth of an inch, but... Yeah, I, I would. I okay. would say. Okay, so it's if, about the same distance I want to be at this point, but I can't. <laughs> okay, so what's happening if people are watching us? Let's just say the pipe is as big as from here to your shoulder. Yeah. Which is uh, probably let's say six feet, yeah. but it's bigger. We'll say six feet. Now a pipeline like that from Mexico, excuse me, from Canada, going all across. The United States, right? Yeah. Above ground, over, right? Mm -hmm. To to export its oil to to Mexico. That's what the Republicans want. Well, here's here's <clears throat> the kicker. Tolls, charge tolls, just the same way you do on a road. Every time the oil moves from one state to another, charge tolls. Deficit's gone. See. You know, you know something. You, could, you can. You, you know, Republicans think outside I, the box. I, yeah. Oh, right outside the box. No, charge tolls. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, but I'm thinking more of the American <clears throat> scenery. In other words, from outer space, they can see the Great Wall of China. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to be able to see our country cut in half, literally cut in half. And it's okay with you. As a, as a Republican, that's okay. Mississippi River cuts our country in half, and that's okay with me. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, what is, what is no, a, pipe, what is a pipeline? Mississippi and a pipeline What together? is a pipeline except a smaller version of the Mississippi? That car Mississippi carries commerce down to New Orleans. The pipeline carries oil, which is Are commerce, down, down to Mexico. You know you, what? You, I, you need, you need, are you on your... I'm on my medication. <laughs> you, you're kidding, right? This well, is a joke. No, it's okay with you. Absolutely, absolutely. The, and you're a Republican. I'm a Republican. And we're that's, both up for re-election. Yes, that, there's a that's good right. possibility we both won't make it. You know, you got to do what you, you got to do what you got to do. I, I, you know, I came in early tonight. Ooh. I have, a, I have a bone to pick. I've with been, who? I've been, I've been sitting here thinking I have a bone to pick with you. Uh oh. And I didn't know this. This is a setup. And Baldy. Baldy, okay. Right. Now, now, who is this guy? This is Socrates. All right. Why is Socrates sitting here? Because he's smarter than us. All right. Now, All right. Bear, bear with me for a second. Let me just, just put this up here right now. This is a book about the great philosophers. And you bought it on sale for seven ninety eight. Seven ninety eight. dollars Okay. All on right. sale. All right, Nobody now, would buy it and read it. Right. Well, it so was, you picked it up. Price. That's right. And the information in that book is absolutely correct. Absolutely no, one correct. one word is out of place. Not one word is out of place. 798. This will take me about 20 seconds. I think you'll find it <clears> interesting. This okay, is a, talking ahead. about Socrates. Yep. Irritatingly, it would also be difficult to overestimate our ignorance of Socrates' actual views. Socrates probably wrote next to nothing of a philosophical nature in any way. None of it survives. Our problem, the Socratic problem, as it's called, is that we do not know exactly what Socrates himself believed. It is not clear that he claims to know anything, even denies being a teacher. So we know he is massively influential, but we do not know the precise nature of that influence. 
The situation is more than exasperating. Sounds a little bit like President Obama. Okay. Oh, anyway. I see. No, so, no, wait a minute. How much of Jesus Christ? So the, this gentleman is 2,400 years old. How much do we know about Jesus Christ? I, uh, they wrote I, the Bible, what, 300 years after? I, I, have, a, I have a proposal. Uh -oh. And my proposal is that we replace this illegal immigrant no, we, uh, <laughs> who, knows, who knows nothing. All right, okay. It, and, and the book says he knows nothing yeah. with a good old New Hampshire philosopher, king, somebody who tells the truth Get all the time. Get your hand out of that bag and let's see. Are you ready? Yes. I have Lowe. here a William Lowe Where bobblehead. Did you get that. A William Lowe bobblehead. Oh can, my God! Hold, hold it up so that so that here. Well, they can hold, see hold, it hold already. It up. Look. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Well, yeah. Where'd you get that? I got that. I actually got it for seven ninety eight. <laughs> At the uh, at at the historical. You got it with the book. No, no, the the, the book was. Already, I got it. I got it at the historical society gift shop up in Concord. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I think we're coming. The back gift from, shop as. You know where at the, the state house. At this, not in the state house, but you know, as as we uh, walk from the parking lot into that little square yes, area. Yes, yes, yes. The, the building on the left is a Historical Society gift shop. Yes, oh yes, 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 that's right. They're, they have bobbleheads for half price. They've got a whole bunch of them. I and almost, this was seven, uh, and you picked up the book and well, the no, bobblehead the, the, at the same time? No, no, the, the well, book. Well, they were both seven ninety eight. The, the book I was about to donate to the library, but I figured I'd, uh, I'd have right. it for a while. But I, I really think that for this program, William Loeb, is much more in tune with uh, the times than than girls. I can tell sock. you some stuff about William Loeb uh, before he married his wife from people who knew, which we won't get into because it'd only get me in trouble. <clears throat> All right, so you think William Loeb is as important as soccer? Well, let me let me. Okay, he wrote nothing. Remember well, that. This we, man we, wrote nothing. That it we know of, yeah. Plato who wrote about Socrates. You mean Socrates was, never wrote a thing. You mean it was it was Plato who may have made up Socrates? Well, and who made up Jesus Christ? I ain't going you know, there. You know, you are I ain't going there. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> the point is supposedly the Bible was written as 300 years. <clears throat> excuse me. 300 years after the life of Jesus Christ. Who wrote it? Who? Well, it depends on whether the, uh, the words you're looking at are in red or black. Okay. <clears throat> if, if Can you the, explain what you mean by that? Well, my understanding, and, and uh, boy, am I the wrong person to be talking about the Bible. I uh, hope so. But, but my understanding is that the words in red are the words of the Lord. And how did the Lord dictate it to who? I, I wouldn't presume to know. Okay, so See, Socrates. I'm, I'm extricating myself from this morass real quick. Okay, so Socrates, who is 400 years older than the birth of Jesus Christ, wrote, or I should say Plato wrote, or you know, about Socrates. Mm -hmm. To this very day, for five or six hundred years, this person has been obviously very prominent in all philosophy. Does that make any sense to you? No, actually, after reading that paragraph, it doesn't make any sense at all. Look, if that was such a book, it would not be on sale for seven ninety eight. It would have been sold out. It wasn't a very good book. Well, you know, I, as, as somebody who believes in private commerce and uh, the profit motive, you do have something there. You do, you do have something. <laughs> no, you, I, if, you, if, you, if you write a good book, yeah. it's, it's, it sells out. But having said that, I bought a lot of books like that, very good books. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that's a good book. Yeah. But Socrates, but dumb things. Now, I've had a couple of dumb things that happened to me this week at the State House. Let's hear your dumb things. Well, I, one of the one of the, the things that I'm I'm really confused. Of, we had a session yesterday, and it was a brief session, and we 
voted not to have a committee of conference on a bill. And the bill, I thought, as it was explained to me, had to do with the rainy day fund. Okay. I pick up the newspaper today, and I find out the bill had to do with uh, taxing or not taxing the Internet. So I'm, I, I'm kind of scratching my head and figuring, what the heck did we vote on? You know, we are elected officials, right? They, you know, Gidge, okay, we'll put a mock, okay. I don't know the guy's name, but it looks good. A lot of this, and some people really like me. It's, a, it's amazing. So they, they, they will vote for me. Mm -hmm. You are a fairly intelligent individual. You can take a lot. I, I thought I've been trying to give it to you. I, I, I thought I was dumb. I mean, well, I was, well, you're no. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. No, right. we're both kind of dumb. But we're elected officials. We're supposed to know uh, things like what you just said. Right. And I agree with you. No committee of conference on something I thought. And today I wake up and I see something completely different. Are we missing something? Are we from now? You got to remember, it's a Republican who is running, basically, the show in the yeah. House, right? Yeah. It's the Speaker O'Brien. Yep. OK. Did your speaker let you down? I don't, I don't know that, that he let me down so much as, and I think you'll agree with this, we have to, there are so many bills and so much stuff going on that, to some extent, we have to rely on some of the printed extracts Blurbs, what have you? Blurbs. In in the. I was up to ten o'clock last night writing a blurb. In the in the calendar. Okay. Yes. Um, and there there's a certain amount of uh, self policing integrity because if somebody writes something that is patently untrue, and that gets out, they're going to lose credibility in all sorts of areas. Well, they, they they it's pretty gone through. But but what has this got to do with your speaker? I mean. Your speaker didn't know? He's a Republican, uh, didn't understand what was going on himself? I, I don't. This is in New Hampshire. Maybe that's the reason why it runs good. Nobody I, knows anything. I, I, like Socrates. Socrates, that's right. I honestly don't know. All I know is the, the bill came before us uh, from, uh, from the Senate they, with an amendment. They wanted to uh, make a change. They wanted a committee of conference. Uh, one of the uh, people in the Finance Committee got up and said, no, the, the Senate will not, they won't negotiate on this, um, and, and so I recommend that we kill it. Did they I, kill it? The, to, to kill, and we killed it. They killed it. We, we, we killed so it. Let, let I, me, I suppose, it, I suppose let, we can bring it back on a reconsideration, but I'm not sure. Yeah, well, l l let's try to get this straight. The Republicans, I mean, it, you know, it, it would be interesting because if we were the Democrats, you'd be pointing at me and saying Democrats, but you other know, Republicans who are running the police. What this individual did, all right, it will, uh, was did something that was really not good. They killed the bill because the Senate has killed a lot of really dumb bills that mm -hmm. we voted on, and maybe I myself have probably voted on some of these dumb things. Sent them to the Senate, and they looked at them, and they said, that one's no good. That one's no good. Well, let's talk about this one. Mm -hmm. So this individual said, kill it. And the majority of the Republicans said, let's kill it. Right? Did that just for spite. I, I, don't, I don't know that it was just for spite. But I do, I mean, I, I wouldn't discount what you're saying. Because uh, one of the things that, that I found up there in, in my first term, and, and I want to be real careful because sometimes I fall into this myself, is there. There are a lot of kids running around. Well, well wait a minute. What well, do you mean there are a lot of kids running when around? I, when I say that, I Because I love that, you know, I, I could see... I'm behavior, behavioral kids running around. There are a lot of people, my sense is, who get their nose out of joint, who get caught up personally in things. Oh, 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 and, oh. And, and uh, oh. I, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to be demeaning children when I say that. And I'm looking for a better way not, to say No, it. wait a minute. You don't want to demean children, I don't want right? To, I don't want to demean but children. what but you're saying is the, the Republicans acted foolish, childish. I, I, it, I think it happens on both sides of the aisle. But in this case... Not it, this time. No, no, not this time. The, in, this time, my sense is, from what I know, 
uh, was that, well, I'm not absolutely sure. I think you're pr probably, there's something accurate in what you say. Well, but, you know, I, I think I'm that not, was an example sure of me just, me just waffling yeah, a whole I, lot out I'm there. I'm not but. sure how many more shows we're going to do together. Uh, it would be nice, but, you know, uh, you seem to be turning to a degree. Are you sure you, you would like to look at that camera and say you want to become a Democrat? Well, I, I have a story on that, if, a brief story. Let me, let me, about becoming, about a, Democrat. becoming a Democrat, yeah. Okay, you just called the Republicans children. Oh, no, no, I, I said a lot. Childish. Allow not just the Republicans. No, not, no, 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 no. Not, not, not lately. Not, no, lately, no. it's been the Republicans. Oh, the the oh, Democrats no. can't be childish. We don't have anything. Yeah, well, let's, let's see why the Democrats always vote as a block. Not necessarily because they, Excuse there aren't there Excuse aren't people. me? Let me tell my story. Here we go. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> we have, we have uh, uh, there's, a, there's a small group of us which, which meets before each session, and it's called a prayer group. Um, I, you say a prayer. Well, what, what happens is... It's a prayer group that you don't pray at? Well, what I do is I, I love the peace. I love the quiet. Uh, I, uh, I meditate a little bit. And let's just say that, that I am in this group of wonderful people. I'm probably the flaming liberal. Well, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay. Let's see if I've got this straight. You go to a prayer group, you don't pray. And you're oh, blaming I, I, liberal at this prayer. What do you do? Well, what I and you do, love what, the silence. What, what I do, I, I, it's a quiet time that uh, I kind of gather my thoughts and, and think about uh, what, what it is. How many I in this group? Do. There are about uh, 10 or 12. And you go off someplace in the LB building or something? And... Mm, no, it, it's, it's, it's in the Walker house. It's, I, I love it. Oh, I, in a I, walk house. Do you yeah. have coffee over there? Yep. You, you can do that? Come on over sometimes. Before, but, yeah, you rascals. Let me let me finish finish up. You with this. rascals. Uh, I was I was sitting there and I could see that that one of my colleagues across the way before we 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 got into it was was looking troubled and I I got the sense that she was looking troubled with me and and she looked across the the table and she said, David. I said, yeah. Are you going to run again? I said, Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love what I'm doing. I'm going to run again. Are you going to run as a Democrat? And I said, oh, no. No, I'm going to, going to run as a Republican. I, I, I believe that, uh, that you dance with the one that you brought. And I'm, I, you dance with the one that you brought. You dance with the one that you brought. Hey, if and, you weren't saying anything, how could she tell? You could tell she was troubled, correct? I wasn't troubled. No, you saw that she was troubled. I saw that she was troubled. And, and, and she, then she asked you. She, then, then she asked me. And, uh, and you said, "I'm going. The one I dance with, I'm." Yeah, because go home be, with. because I'm I my I'm a fiscal. I said I'm I'm fiscally conservative. I think the the budget How was right. Can a, you not? We, oh, oh, I can, want to can, kick can, you. Can. I want to. Democrats hush. not physically just hush. Let me finish. Thanks, uh, Dad. Bad can. My corner. Bad can. <laughs> said, <laughs> I uh, I'm physically, you know, fiscally conservative, and I'm very proud of the uh, the budget that we voted on. But I don't think I was elected to uh, muck about with all of the social issues that that, oh, are, that are now oh, coming in. Oh wait, wait. And what I don't believe you. You don't muck around, muck about with the social issues. Oh, okay. So Ken, you're still in your corner. Issue? I'm almost. I'm All right, almost, okay, I'm almost through. All right. Uh, and with that, I was thinking about uh, right to work, which I voted against. Uh, you voted for it, then yep. you voted against it. Yeah, I think John Kerry, a good Democrat. Oh, okay, so you flip flop. I fl I learned. I learned. Ah, uh, I'll I, have to use that myself. Yep, I like that. I voted uh, against. The uh, ch any changes in the marriage bill? I've I've voted almost always for Planned Parenthood. Okay, now you voted for gay marriage. Yeah, you voted for gay. That's right. That's right. That's okay. right. We'll talk about that in a, in a right. couple of minutes because that's a big thing. All right. So I am. I'm certainly not a. I'm a rhino. You're a rhino. A rhino. I mean that's that's. I, 
you know. And a rhino, for those who don't know what a rhino is, explain it to me. A rhino is uh, an acronym for Republican in name only. And I, I wouldn't go quite so far as to say I'm a Republican in name only. I'm a middle of the road kind of guy. I'm the kind of guy who will reach across the aisle. I'm the kind of guy who will work with the other side. I'm the kind of guy who, who will seek solutions. To? I'm the yep. kind of guy who looks at the red is light this, and talks to a, the red this, light. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this a political speech? This is a political speech? Why the heck do you think I'm here if I can't do... <laughs> what? You think I would put up with him for an hour a week if I couldn't at least get my... Uh, it, you know, let get people know how, how good you are. Yeah, exactly. All right, I've, All right, I've, so I've had my a, say. You're Go a ahead. Republican in name only. Well, I, I think that's probably how I'm going to be characterized, so I might as well embrace that's it. That's a rhino. Right. But you know one thing? Uh-oh. Rhinos have horns. Rhinos are fast. Oh, God. Rhinos, Rhinos have are very fast. tough skins. Yeah. And they're also homely. Well, yeah. Of all the animals, they got to be the most homely. Well, you know what? If that's the case, say hello to my fellow rhino. No, I'm not a yeah no a Democrat <laughs> yeah no 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 no. All right, go, go I, ahead. I know I I love these Republicans. I'm not gonna look at that. I'm not gonna wait. This oh, well, it's looking at me. All right, I love these Republicans who say, oh, I am fiscally conservative. I we we cut the fat off, etc. But we ended with a surplus. That's us, the Democrats. Okay, we ended with a surplus. When when was that? The when you took over two years ago, you came in with a surplus. Now, are you ending this year with a surplus? Probably will. Okay, but you don't know that. No, I mean the year okay. hasn't ended. So now, uh, we when the Repub when the Democrats gave it over to the Republicans, we were four point nine percent unemployment. What is it now that you're the Republican? It's 5.1. 5, 5. 5. Is that it? 5.1, 5.2, something like that? Yeah, I think it's 5.2. Okay. That's a lot of people. Uh, it, it certainly would like so to have it lower. So let me see. So conservative, conserv all right, you're very conservative. And Fiscally you, conservative. So, so people, you, you, so cutting jobs is really important. Is that what C you're saying? No. Well, you cut jobs. You know, one of the reasons that we have a little bit higher employment, unemployment is because we did the right thing by cutting spending in the state and lowering the number of state employees, lowering the number of county employees, lowering the number of municipal employees. And once that works through the system, we'll be in much better shape. What we did was we lowered the payroll for the state government, for yeah, the local government, for the county by government. By firing by people. By laying that's, people off. Oh, no, no, no. It's called firing. You no. can call lay it off all you want. You fire somebody, they don't have a job. And that's good politics? What it is is necessary because oh, there, are people who, there are people who cannot oh, afford I to see. pay the taxes. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So there are people who can't afford to pay the taxes and you fire them. Is that what you're saying? No. The taxpayers. Can't afford to pay the taxes. Just the same way in, so pri no, it's well, in well, private well, industry. All right, okay. Would you, you right. have private industry you not be able to lay off people? Republicans went up there, right? Mm -hmm. You took a lot away from the city of Nashua. Our tax rate is going up for, because of you guys. In fact, a lot of the Republicans went up there and forgot where they were from. I'm from Nashua. I'm from Ward 6. I never forgot that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people ran up there and were... And, I, and, I, and I'm putting it in your terms, childish, mm -hmm. okay? And I must tell you, when we, we did some childish things when we were the majority. I'm not going to, all right, did some so childish things they forgot where they were from. But now it's coming back to us here in the city. And I think before they vote for you or vote for me, I think they're going to have to look at and see what the Republicans and the Democrats have done to, to bring down the taxes here in Nashville. It was you Republicans who got rid of the, the, the rail. I, I voted for the rail. Well, I mean, you're, you're a majority. You're a Republican. I didn't see you while well, you're from Nashville. If you didn't, you, yeah, so I can All understand. Right. The, one, of the, one of the big differences, I think, that we're, we're displaying here is, you see this right here? Oh, God. What, what does that say? David Robbins. And what does it say for, for, what do I do? Representative. Does it say state representative? New Hampshire House of Representatives. Okay. You know what this is? 
I'm a New Hampshire state representative. What that means is I have to look at the entire state. I cannot be just parochial. Well, I certainly can, can view uh, what, what is going on and want to do the very best for the people in my, in my district. In Nashua. In my district. Okay, and, and Nashua, Nashua is what? The economic engine that runs the state? Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's more, more money than Manchester for the state. I, if <clears throat> if you say so, for the sake of argument, I'll agree with okay. you. I don't. I don't know. Now you take care of the state. If you take care of Nashua, Nashua will take care of the state, as we've been doing. When you bring taxes or take jobs away, which means we must add jobs in the city or cut jobs because the money. Uh, are not, uh, is not coming into the city, then whose fault is that? It's you guys who are running the government. All right, so you cut, 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 cut. It comes back to us here in the city of Nashua. What, what I heard you say is what's good for Nashua is good for the state. Absolutely. All right. I, I seem to recall, I think, it was under, Absolutely. I think it was under President Eisenhower, it's a fellow named Charlie Wilson, not Charlie Wilson or Charlie Wilson's law, uh, he was the Secretary of Defense. He was also president of uh, GM uh, before that. And I, I seem to recall a phrase, he, him saying, uh, what's good for GM is good for America. And, and somehow that really didn't work uh, out. Oh, okay, all right, that, that's very clever. But let's Thank come you. back to Thank today. You. What, you're, what I'm saying is, what is good for Nashua? Nashua is the economic engine that runs the state of New Hampshire. I believe Manchester might be getting close, but Nashua gives more money to the state than any city. We give more. We, so Nashua, in a, in a sense, you mean runs the, state takes the more economic, from well, makes more for the state, is the economic engine. So when you turn and say, no, no, I, I cannot just look at Nashua. I've got to look at the state. And I say to you, what I do is I look at the economic engine. Who's running the state? That's us. So in other words, uh, money, money should go into Nashua to take care of uh, Nashua's social needs, but, but the heck with Coas County or, and the heck no, with the part think, of the state. No, I think monies should have come in on the rail which could have if the Republicans would have got together. Of course, the Republicans, let's get this straight. The Republicans here in, in Nashua all were together, Republicans and Democrats. We wanted the rail. That, and that was, that was one of the few times that I, I, we can, whoops. Yep, three. Yep. That was one of the few times that we can, we can say that, that we, we work together in a bipartisan fashion. Well, it shoots you if you voted against it. It's not a matter of working in bipartisan. That we, anybody who voted against it would get shot. I mean, come on. Well, it, it, it also it, it made sense. It okay. made, made okay. sense for the so, state, too. So we've agreed uh, that Nashua is the economic engine that runs the state of New Hampshire. I, I, I'm saying I'm willing, oh, to, right, okay. I'm willing to take all that right. as a matter of faith. And you say you've got to look at the entire state. And I, and I agree, you've got to look at the entire state. But first, you look at the economic engine. You make sure the economic engine is running properly. And when... People go up to Concord and forget where they're from, especially the Republicans here in Nashua, and all of a sudden they start cutting stuff and it comes back and it costs, we get less money for schools, we get less money for health. All of a sudden we've got to make that up. Mm -hmm. So I say Republicans wake up. We're in the economic, uh, Nashua is the economic engine that runs the state. It's the largest uh, producer of money, call it. Yet you guys go up there and say, we got to look at the whole state, but it'll cost us more money. And I don't know why the people of Nashville would vote for you or vote for me if I thought in those terms and believed that. Well, I, I guess, I, guess I, I try to look at what's best for the state of New Hampshire. And, and if the folks who, who elect me don't feel that that's what they want their representative to do, then I, I, I won't be reelected. Well, the... God, I keep knocking this thing off here. And I will... Why don't you put it on your beard? 
That's not a bad. That's not a bad. That's that's where I get my snack. All right. All right. Uh, well, the problem is, and, and I you you bring it up, and uh, and you're a rare individual to bring it up, and this is the a compliment, the one of few I shall give you tonight. You. You brought up a, a, a fact that, and you, you said, you couldn't do this six months ago, said that, guess what? I'm hanging around with a bunch of children sometimes. They're acting like children, and they are Republicans. Again, not just limited to, but Republicans, Mostly, are, re Republicans are the majority at okay, this point. Okay, so they're acting like children. There, there is some childlike behavior, yes. All right. So the Republicans are acting like children. And they, in turn, cut, been cutting a lot. I mean, OK. But yet, here in the city of Nashua, we're not getting the same amounts of money that we have basically given to the state, not getting some back or the proportionately back. It's costing us more money. Why would anyone want to vote for a Republican? Well, I, I, guess, I guess we'll find out. I guess. If, uh, if they want to vote for somebody who, who tries to be reasonable, uh, who, tries oh to work, who tries to work across, across oh, the aisle, bah. who tries to uh, oh. find solutions to problems, it, it, and, and who tries to work uh, pragmatically and, and there's not about just what, ideologically. four of you and the entire work together? Work together. The Republicans together. and the Democrats. What have you done with the Democrats? All right, I'll tell you what I've done. Okay. Uh, I except have, be here. Except, except. Well, this okay. is this is a big thing. Uh, probably this will already have happened by the time uh, this show airs. But on uh, on May twenty second, uh, David Hess, a Republican, and uh, Gary Richardson, a Democrat, are going to come down to Nashua, spend two hours uh, discussing the CACR twelve, which is the Educational Constitutional Amendment, the funding amendment. And it's tremendously important, uh, been able to, to get the two of them together, willing to do this in a bipartisan way. No, that, that's a show you're putting on. That's, that's okay. a show that... Do you have a name for the... Uh, we, we will. We'll have some promos out again, I think, after. It'll, it'll probably happen before this airs. But so you're leaving me. No. Oh, God, no. So you're leaving me. No, 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 so no. So he's no, taking off. No. I get you on the TV. You do five shows, and now you're a superstar. You want to take off funding. No, no. I, I, as a... I already told you, Kim. <laughs> Dance with the one you no, brought. No, take home the one. Dan you're... Take home the one. Right, okay. Take home the one you brought. All right, here uh, we go. <laughs> I, I do. I do have some small amount of loyalty, um, and also this is fun. Well, I mean, it, it, to, listen. I love Democrats, but I sit around with Democrats, and we agree. Is uh, and, and and you you will find this. When you sit down with Republicans and you start talking with the Republicans and you start agreeing with you, what kind of a show is that? Everybody I, agrees with everybody. I don't agree with Republicans. Well, you know, you're a rhino. You've already admitted that you're, you're a Republican only in name. Well, I, I, yeah. You know, it's, it's... And so you want the Republicans to vote for you. <laughs> and, and, and Democrats and independents. Uh, I, like, I like you. But, you know, you've got you to gotta cast a wide net. Do you want to the wide net? Do, the question is for me: Do I want to bloviate about problems, or do I want to try to find solutions? Blo isn't that a great word, bloviate? Hey, yeah. That that's got to be the name of the show. The bloviate, the bloviators, the bloviators. <laughs> I like that. I like that. We're like gonna. That. We're going to have to go on dictionary.com. Well, let's let's talk about this a little. All right. There's a good possibility that you and I. It won't be just Gidge World. It will be possibly the Out of Politics. That's, that's and that true. And that will be you and I. As I, long as you remember, I'm the boss. Well, I, uh, I, I don't think I could possibly forget that. Yeah, right, okay. I, I, I get reminded regularly. Um, you're, do, you're, you're holding your own, David. Well, no, I, you know, I, you do, know. I do the best I can with what I brought. Which certainly is not, you've admitted that you're a rhino. That you're, you bought this thing. My sword and my shield, William Loeb. William Loeb? Awful. What's, what's the matter? He's Awful. cute. Awful. No, wait a minute. Awful. Is this? 
Sure, is there a certain, do, do, do they a certain alike? likeness do, do there? Do we look alike? A certain, yeah. No. William Loeb. Now, you know, the, the best part of this is what he has in his hand is he's got a copy of the Union Leader with a dynamite stick in it. And, and really, that kind of reminds me of you because there, there are times <clears throat> when I just wonder if you're going to go off like a rocket. Well, talking about that, let me have a little sip of water and I'll tell you a story about going off like a rocket. Please. As you know, um, I, I have this big thing of politicians leaving Nashville for getting there from Nashville. Mm -hmm. I have seen politicians the first day that they were there. I, when I first went up there, you walk into this very large room. It's very kind of formal, you know, pomp and circumstance. I said, I'm going to watch my emotions. I want to see where my mind is. And so I watched it. And I watched everything, and I kept, I kept the ego away. Mm -hmm. And I walked out of there, and I saw people walk through the door floating like they had just been to heaven. And I thought to myself, no, you forgot who you were, who you are, you know, all within 15 minutes. So I, I'm a kind of like, you know, let's just be Kenny and, and enjoy this. But it gets me in trouble because I have spoke on two bills this year, mm -hmm. both Republicans, four Republicans, which got me in trouble with the Democrats. So Democrats kind of not happy with me because I go across the aisle. You know, that, 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 you know the, the city of Nashville has probably got two good people. Let me, fin let me finish the story mm -hmm. because this is important. So a bill comes up. It's uh, 334, I believe it is. Okay, I'll say 334, that's the bill. And what it is, it is, there was a bill, I think it was 1379, that we passed in Commerce two years ago. Came into law in 2011. It's been in a law since 2011. And what the law states is, no person, sales agent, an insurance sales agent, can knock on the door, start talking about Medicaid, get people to open the door by using the words Medicaid, come in and sit down and start to sell them something else. And the reasons for that is, is they've been taking advantage of the poor, uh, the, dis the disabled, the elderly. I mean, they're, they're really predators. Mm -hmm. So two Republicans who have been in the insurance business a long time put this bill in. Basically, the bill says, we're real sorry, but if you make an appointment to talk about Medicare, that's what you've got to talk about. If you want to talk about something else, you must set up another appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, insurance men and women who have clients or, or customers for years and years, that makes no difference. You just, if you're talking, you talk. But it was to stop the predators. Now, in comes this bill where they want to eliminate that. In other words, you can cold call. You can open the door, get them to open their door using Medicaid and talk about anything else. So there is the banking, uh, excuse me, the insurance people are there, and they were asked, is this law working? And they said, yeah, the law is working. Is the law working? Yeah, the law is working. And why would you want to change the law? We don't want to change the law. Now, across from me is Manus. You know who he is. I do. He Rep throws Representative his hands up An and said, Andrew Manus. Yes, he throws his hands up and go, wait a minute. They have a constitutional right. And I go, constitutional right to what? To do anything they want to do, insurance people. And I'm going, they have, no one has a right to, to badger the elderly, the disabled. And we're arguing about this bill. I said, wait a minute. I said, okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't you make an amendment? And that is that ask them if they have the power of attorney or ask them if they have a guardian. And do you know they wouldn't put that amendment in there? So what this means, and this bill may go through, it looks like it, it's going to go. We voted it down inside, uh, inside uh, committee, but that doesn't mean anything. Has it come to the floor yet? No, it's going to be to the floor. 
It's okay. coming to the floor. And I have to speak on that bill and also we call it the Salinger bill. Yeah. We're talking about two things. But where does it say in a constitution that an insurance person has the freedom to lie to open the door? and take advantage of people who, the elderly, and I must say, not all of them, but many are, you know, get confused by you coming into my house to, to talk about something. And so they've been buying insurance and uh, big complaints from lawyers calling, advocates calling. So there was a law. Now they want to repeal that. Does that make any sense to you? Well, no, and I'll tell you why. A couple of reasons why. One of them is, I have the, the philosophy that if something ain't broke, don't fix it. If, 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 if something is, is working, unless there's something wrong, don't change the law. Very, very simple. We have, we have so many laws, we don't, need, we don't need to go in and change laws just because somebody thinks that something might happen sometime in the future. Well, the, the, the reason is, is that, that since... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let's finish well, that, the that, that, that's okay. That, that's that's the other thing. And and I, isn't it isn't it Article 104, 105 in the Constitution where they actually do say that insurance companies can come in and badger people? I I, I thought I saw that. Maybe in I, the Constitution. Maybe, maybe I maybe I missed it. Maybe I was mis misreading it. In the Constitution. Yeah, I guess it says that insurance. So you can go I, in and badger people? You know, I, I, I must have been... I wonder who wrote that. I wonder, wonder been mis, mis but you're But you're, one of the points you're bringing up is some, we have a whole host. I'm not, I'm not picking on Representative Manus because he's a smart guy uh, and I like him. I am. Okay, well, that's fine. We have a whole lot of people who are instant constitutional scholars. Yeah, instant. Instant? Like coffee. They wake up one morning and they know everything because they carry the book. Well, I, I, I just... Card-carrying constitutionalist. I, 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 well, that's an interesting... Yes, a card-carrying constitutionalist. I like that. And they somehow, That could be though, the name of your program. It would be a nice thing. Okay. Uh, the bloviating card-carrying like constitutionalist. Like <laughs> somehow, <laughs> many of these people feel that they have, they have the word of the Founding Fathers in their hand. I know it. And, and by God, their reading of this document They're right. Is, is right. Now, there are some people up there who know a whole lot about the Constitution. Uh, well, let, let us, let's say but, state but Constitution. State Do you Constitution. know who lately has not stood up? Jasper from Hudson, who basically is really the, the, the person who knows more about the state Constitution. Well, he and Dan, it's, uh, I, I would be the two, the two people right. that I would. would he hasn't got up. Yeah. He's mad. Yeah. I guess he lost an election. He was, uh, I don't know what he selectman. was. I think he was selectman. I think he was a selectman. And he, he, um, but, but that's, you know, you're pointing out how some of us get up there and all of a sudden we think we have a license to do whatever it is there we you want go. to. There, 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 there you go. There you go. There you go. And, and you forget where you're from. Forget and, and I and, and you I hear where and you're I, from. I agree and with it you. It happens on that. to everybody. It does. Okay. It does to one extent or another. All right. And and sometimes but less to, to most. I hopefully less to me. Well, sometimes I, I we need we need a little that, exactly. And hopefully this is me slapping you around and getting you to admit that you're a Republican only in name. I like that. Yeah. Well, Republican in name only. Rhino. Okay, Rhino. Rhino. I, you know, I'll I'll admit to that if we can keep uh, Bill here in, in lieu of Baldy. No, like hell. Oh, all right. so Socrates. Wait a minute. Let's see. William Loeb over Socrates. Let me see. Who's the smartest? Oh, I don't know. Hey, he left a newspaper empire. He? Nobody knows he what he wrote. It. Nobody knows what he wrote. Excuse this guy. Nobody knows what he wrote. And that's what the book you said. You haven't read? That's what the book said. That's what the, You haven't read anything of Socrates? All I've read is what some guy named Plato said he wrote. Well, I mean, do you know anything about Socrates? I know a little bit about platonic relationships. I've had too many uh, of those Plato, in my life. <laughs> no, no, you're not going to get out of this. Do you know anything 
about Socrates? I know very little. I do know. All right, name something. Stay <clears throat> away from the hemlock. Ah. Ah, that's good. Uh, don't, uh, don't tick off the powers that be. That's right. Or else they will send you to the hemlock. Like, let's see, like uh, no Republicans would speak to Kevin Land again <laughs> because they didn't want to take the hemlock from O'Brien? You know, you're making an interesting point. No, I'm what, making a good point. You are. Why, why, don't you, why don't you spend a few seconds, fill people in with what, what you're talking about? Well, I, I think everybody knows. In, in Nashville, tel, oh, the Telegraph is, I'll say it's our newspaper, meaning my family. It's not everyone's family. And uh, they did uh, four or five days on the Speaker of the House, mm -hmm. uh, the importance, uh, some of the foolish things that he's done. But one of the things that they could not get is Republican to talk about him. He has scared the hell out of everyone. Mm -hmm. And if somebody goes to LSRs, they will see the first law was this year. Do you remember? The first LSR was by uh, Representative Susan Emerson. And uh, I, I believe that what she wanted to do was to uh, pass a law. Uh, she proposed a law that outlawed bullying in the, in the state house. By who? Uh, Actually, that I don't know. I, I didn't. It was representatives mm -hmm. bullying representatives, Republicans bullying Democrats, bullying Republicans to do what they're told to say. That is just one large black mark. Though I'm a Democrat, yeah. and this was came from the Republicans, a Republican did this against Republicans. Mm -hmm. That's a black mark for all of us. To think that we talk about bullying, because I've mentioned this. I said, oh, you mean bullying at school? I said, no, I mean up, up at the state house. you got kids up at the state house? And, you know, we we, we yeah, talked about right, those right, children, okay. all right. Yeah, we have a lot of kids up at the state house, mm -hmm. a lot of kids. Any of them grow up. Anyone that you have seen blossom? Is there anyone so from Nashua, let's say? Silver, he, he what? He's, he's, he cooks frogs and... And uh, pigeons. Well, Pete Silva is is largely responsible for my being. Pete Silva Pete is Silva. responsible for you. Largely responsible, and, and I'll tell you why. I a couple of years ago, more than that, before I knew what it was I wanted to do, I called him up. I knew he was a state rep, and and I said, uh, Representative Silva, can I you know can I talk with you about what you do up in the legislature? He said, Sure. Hey, call me Pete. Uh, look, I can come over and talk yeah, but, to you. Well, what did he no, know? No, He's only did, there for two terms. Yeah, but wait. Well, he's only been there for one term at this point. Um, this is his first term. This is his second term. His second term. So this yeah, was okay. before I ran. Okay. And he came over. He spent an hour and a half with me. We talked about. You know, I asked him all sorts of questions. He told me all sorts of stuff about being a legislator. Never once did he even ask me what my party was. Well, he obviously he was sucking you into it. But I. I I really, really okay, let, appreciate about, that. Look, you can't use silver because, and I, I can't, I can't say anything really bad about silver because he's one of us. He's one All of right. these people who do shows. I like, but I, I like him. Now, who in Nashua have you seen growing? Randy Whitehead. What has Randy done that has surprised you? Uh, not that it necessarily has surprised me, but as I listen to him, uh, he doesn't speak very often. He's very thoughtful, and he makes sense. And, and he's sort of one of these quiet people who, when he speaks, he's a freshman, uh, and, and, I, and I, can, I, I, just, I just get a sense of some wisdom there. So he's, he's kind of influenced you? Um, or have you seen him grow? And you hope one day he'll be as, and more as intelligent I, as you. I don't, I don't know that I'm in a position to say that people are growing or not, because I'm, I'm kind of on the bottom of the food chain here. I mean... I think somebody. I think you should ask somebody else. Do you see robins growing or not? Uh, well, I, I've got to tell you uh, because we're we're on a, a, a very important board, which is uh, you know uh, for for uh, uh, Hillsborough County yes. for executive committee. This is a big deal. There's only three Democrats. I am one of them. This is a big deal. How big is our our Executive committee is 21. There's 21. But how, may, how much do we deal with? 70, 80, 7 the, million? The, or? The, the budget, I think, the proposed budget is about 85 million. However, about, it's only about 
55 million that we actually have control over. The rest of it's in and out Medicaid. Oh yeah, okay. So, but what I have, what I have seen, and you, you brought a, a point up, and I, and I've watched people grow, as you have watched people grow. All right, and we are on the executive committee, at Hillsborough County, pretty mm -hmm. important positions. We deal with a lot of money. And you said one day to me, and this was pretty much in confidence, and Democrats and Republicans talk who they can sort of trust each other, but you said it on the air. And you said you've done some things that you wouldn't have done. Meaning money-wise, probably. I, I may, <clears throat> I, I don't specifically recall, but I'm, I, I know that over the last 18 months, my my thoughts on things have evolved, and I'm sure they'll continue to okay, evolve. Okay, no, wait. You're not. I'm trying to give you a compliment, but you're trying to get a little bit more than maybe you deserve. I, I'm. Let's get this straight. You told me there were things that you wouldn't do now. Is that fair to say? After 18 months? Yeah, I think that's probably true. Okay, and I think that happens if the, your first term. I'm on my second term. And it really takes a first, people don't understand this. In the state of New Hampshire, we have two-year terms. But the learning, and there's no way to learn the government unless you're in the government. Yeah, there's no books, true. True. okay? So the learning curve is literally two years. So if you're elected again, your second two years will be completely different. Now, you're probably going, oh, how could it be different? You're, it's going to be different because you're going to see new people coming in. Right. And you're going to see every single mistake they made, you've made. I would agree with that. And so that's pretty, that's pretty powerful. I've had enough of you. I don't want to do this anymore. You had enough of me? Yes, I've had Rhino? enough of you. Rhino? Rhino. Let, let the pipeline come right across the entire United States to go to where? Mexico. Mexico. To do what? So that they can ship their oil to Venezuela. Venezuela. Venezuela sends it back here. Well, no, they send it to Joe Kennedy, and he distributes it. Yeah, well, it, excuse me, Joe Kennedy is in the United States. Well, he's not the United States, but he is. All right, okay, in, so anyway, a, that's, so we, we've had I, some foolish things. So you're going to, all right, all right uh, email address, anything you want to tell? Anything I want to tell? Uh, I'm at... Uh, David S. Robbins at Comcast.net. Love to hear from you. And he is? Uh, I'm Ken Gidge, and I am this Gidge World, by the way. That's the name of the show, but I also have a website called Gidge World, which is an art website. Mm -hmm. I also have an email address, which is kgidge at AOL.com. That's K-G-I-D-G-E at AOL.com. Telephone number is 864 Nine three three two. That's eight six four nine three three two. I am on Facebook. Are you on Facebook? I'm not. Oh, you got to get on Facebook. You got to get on Facebook. Now, I'm on Facebook, and also I'm learning how to Twitter or tweet or whatever they call it. And in the early days, it would be nothing. You give a phone number, maybe. Here's a guy with too much time on his hands who obviously can't hold a job. <laughs> so, on that, thank you very much, and see you, you next time. Take care.